Africa, 55% of the persons in Congo are women. Oh, wow. So imagine we say to women to not make a change. It's more than half of the, like, of the people. Oh. We have to be part of the, of the change we, the, we, we want to see. We have to be, we have a, um, a role to play. Mm. And actually, I'm not the kind of person that will say to you that man and woman are the same thing. We are different. But it's not we, like a gender is better and the other one is less. We are different, but equal. And so we have to also make a change, play a part, and uh, we have to, to have the freedom that we want. It's not because you are free, independent, but you're not a good wife. It's not because you're free, independent, but you're not like a good mom. You can so, be all of that. So you're, you're talking about a financial freedom for young females. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Financial freedom, but also a freedom of the mind. Why not we cannot think and um, act and create things? Why we just have to cook? Why we just have to ask for money? And as I said, um, we have a culture where we always ask, ask, ask. Well, women also have to ask, ask, like, 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 like a kid. You I heard know. that. <laughs> Enough of asking for the wigs and the nails and the... Uh-huh, continue. <laughs>that we need to get a team in every country that we go to because when I go to Congo I've been inspired to have a team for every country that I go to in Congo the team is Africa is a country not a continent because when I came to Congo I'm seeing stuff that I used to see in Ghana in here I've seen stuff that I used to see in so many countries that I've seen in different African countries right here in Congo which makes us a country so Africa is no longer a continent but a country from Watermaya do you guys have palm wine in your countries because I came to Congo and I'm seeing palm wine. I thought palm wine only exists in Ghana. I'm super excited today. You know why? Because a young female African is making my dream come true. A young female African is helping change the narrative in Kinshasa. And that is why I'm smiling a lot today. You know what she did? Here in Kinshasa, they said coffee does not grow. And she left all the way from Paris, came to Kinshasa and said, you know what, I will do what you people think is impossible. And that is why I found myself in here to come share her story so that you and I can help take her to the world. You know what you need to do to help me? Like the video, please. It's very important. Can we get 20,000 likes on this video? It's by force to like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and come with me. Let's go meet this young, inspiring female entrepreneur here in Congo, Kinshasa. I am Maya. Do you know that you are an inspiration? <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't know, but sometimes I feel it. And do you know that everyone is telling me that I cannot leave Kinshasa without meeting you? Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, are you celebrating Kinshasa? The first day that I told people that I'm going to Congo, they asked me, are you going to Kinshasa? Because we want you to meet one of the people that is actually making a change in Kinshasa. Wow. It's a pleasure meeting you. It's a pleasure meeting you too. My name is Watermaya, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. And since you are the one and only person who is growing coffee in Kinshasa, I would love to know you more. Tell me something about yourself. Uh, well, my name is Tisha Mukuna. Mm -hmm. I born in Kinshasa. Okay. But I grew up in Paris. You grew up in Paris? Yes. Wow. For my study. How long did you stay in Paris? Uh, well, for all my study, till my master. And uh, my MBA, I did it in China, in oh, Shanghai. Okay. And then from there, what happened? You decided to come back to Kinshasa? Yes, from there, I decided to come back to Kinshasa. For me, it was normal to come back to my home country. I want to ask you a question. Yeah. See, were you normal? Do people talk you're normal living in Europe <laughs> and coming back to Africa? Well, uh, I think that if we want to change Africa, we need all Africans. That is deep. 
Wow! So you're growing coffee in here. What is the inspiration behind it? You know, first of all, they said they don't grow coffee in Kinshasa, but you're the first person to do it. What really inspired you to do that? Si, uh, si, si je dois être honnête, je dirais mon père. Uh, mon père a toujours une passion pour l'agriculture. Mm. Donc on a commencé uh, à planter des choses, des oranges, des citrons, des mangoustaniers. Et, uh, et jusqu'au jour, je me suis dit, tiens, j'aimerais faire pousser aussi du café. Alors tout le monde me disait, non, non, le café, ça pousse pas à Kinshasa. Mais comme je suis têtu, uh, j'ai décidé de le faire. with coffee too okay. but everyone was telling me okay coffee doesn't grow in Kinshasa you cannot do coffee in Kinshasa hmm. and you cannot do Arabica in Kinshasa but uh, I try because I I like to see by myself and it's grown and as you can see we have Arabica and how do you feel knowing that you've done something impossible in Kinshasa actually at first it was just like Tada, I have coffee and that's it. And then people were telling me, okay, I know someone mm -hmm. in Turkey, I know someone in Lebanon, he can buy your coffee, he can do that, he can do this. I was like, but why I will just sell it? Why I cannot just transform it, build my own brand? Bonne nouvelle! Nous sommes enfin à Kin Marché où vous pouvez trouver la quinoise. Nous proposons quatre gammes de café pour satisfaire tous nos clients. Le café Arabica, très doux, faible teneur en caféine pour une journée aromatisée. Le café Mocaccino, le meilleur café chocolaté. Il est recommandé contre la fatigue et le stress. Le café Arabusta, idéal pour renforcer votre énergie au quotidien. Robusta, pour plus de robustesse, avec ce nouveau format et une valve 250 grammes. La quinoise, le plaisir du vrai café 100% naturel, 100% congolais. Wow. And this is how I was like, okay, no, I have to do it. I have to, to build my own brand. I have to, to, to do something with all of that. And uh, this is how uh, the whole thing started. And, I, and I'm not working by myself. Okay. I see he's here. <laughs> It's the chief of the village. Okay. Chief Cobra. It helps me a lot. And uh, yeah. So let me understand, you have your own brand, so which means that after you harvest the coffee, you just add value to the coffee. Yes. So from the fresh to what? To the final product. To the final product. Yes. Let me understand this. How many hectares do you have right now? Uh, the old plantation is 20 hectares. Okay. But we do coffee on eight, and year by year we had more hectares. Uh, like eight, nine, and more uh, year by year, we, we had more surface. And I will show you how we do it and how we plan it. Wow. Now, before you show me that, see, you said you, you, you started growing coffee, you, you don't work alone. So which mm -hmm. means you work with the people from this community? Yes, obviously. Um, all the people that work in the plantation mm -hmm. are living just nearby. And um, it's also an open plantation. That means that all the people from the village mm -hmm. can grow everything they want in the plantation for wow. free. So there is like some spaces just for them. They can put their own uh, vegetables, fruits, and it's for them. So far, how many people are working for you now? Uh, wow. Uh, in the plantation, six to eight, six. Um, Permanent workers? Yes. Okay. And two more for, like, depends on, on the work. So which means you, you still need to open a coffee shop? I Are you thinking so. about that? Yes, I hope so. I want to have the um, Starbucks made in Kinshasa. Oh. Like, kind of, like a coffee shop like that. Oh, okay. That makes you proud and that makes you, um, yeah, proud. W what is the brand name of your coffee now? La Quinoise. La Quinoise. Yes, Quinoise means a girl from Kinshasa, a woman from Kinshasa. And the name La Quinoise is because the plantation is in Kinshasa. It seems you love Kinshasa with all your heart. Uh, exactly, I love Congo. You love Congo, <laughs> yeah. not just Kinshasa. Yes. Knowing that they don't grow coffee in Kinshasa, 
how did you discover that this land is perfect for for coffee uh at first i just wanted to try because everyone was telling me coffee doesn't grow so it was just a test actually i i, I had nothing to lose i was a student at this time so it was just like i have nothing to lose let's try it and i was coming back and forth for holidays because okay. i was studying in, in, in paris. paris and um and well it grew so it was surprising for me and at first it was just like aha it grew good and uh, it grows good and uh, after that um, the idea of doing a business came after it came when i really realized that it was something unique mm. and that it was something that can really show the congo in a new in a new angle mm -hmm. because most of the times we are talking about congo because of the wars because of bad news or st stuff like that and uh, with the coffee we can talk about congo for its agriculture for its people and um, for what we can do really unique. You know, um, they, what are they doing? They're harvesting coffee right now. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're taking uh, the coffee from the tree. Okay. They're just taking the, the red, the red cherries. Yeah, the red cherries. Yeah. Uh, like, for example, in one tree, mm. you can take, you, you, like, you can pick coffee multiple times okay. because in one tree all the trees are not red at the same moment okay so they're just taking the the red ones and they keep the yellow and the greens mm. like maybe in one week they will come back to this this tree for the red ones do you think it was worth it um cultivating coffee yes of course i it's worth it because uh we create jobs in 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 this area we create jobs in Kinshasa too because we transform the coffee uh, and we make a lot of people proud actually. Mm. Like for example, I, I have some pictures from, from, like from Congolese uh, in Canada, Congolese in the um, United States, in London, and they will take a picture of the coffee and they will be like purely Congolese. Wow. And like just for that, for me it's worth it. And how does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel... Um, Nervous because it's a lot of pressure too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it makes me feel happy that um, all the hard work people can notice it and they can like be like, okay, that's a good news from uh, from uh, Congo. You know, I, I know that you're talking about positive stuff about Congo, but definitely you faced a lot of challenges when you wanted to start this farm. What was the major challenge that you faced when you started? Uh, well, you see the road to come in, in, in this plantation. Uh, we have no road, we have no electricity. Uh, all, all the things we do, we do it um, like it's a pri it's, it's private sector. We don't have like a lot of helps and uh, that, the, that the main things. But things are, sta are, are starting to change. Okay. Like for example, the Minister of uh, Entrepreneurship okay. gave the uh, entrepreneurs some uh, subventions. So it will help us too, but uh, yet the roads, the electricity, so infrastructure, it's really hard. As you can see, I just have men. Yeah. Because in the village, all the young people left. So you just have like old papa they all, they all or left. old mama. Uh, yes, they left for the city center to have a job because there's nothing around. Mm. you have done a great job i mean like establishing this year at the end of the day you are even creating jobs for the people in the village and i believe that the government need to support you guys with roads you don't think so yeah i think so but it's complicated it's really complicated to have the help of the government for the roads it's complicated to have the help of the government for the electricity for the water so we try to do it by ourselves like Which is example, difficult. It's really difficult. Because you need a lot of money to invest in it. A lot. And, uh, well, I'm by myself. <laughs> and, uh, but, for example, one good thing for the village is um, it's a village where you can only see, like, kids or old people. Why? Because all the young people went to the city centre to have jobs. So, obviously, I cannot ask for old ladies, like for grandmas, to work in this, uh, in this plantation. It's too, it's too hard. So, I have mostly uh, some uh, oh, daddies. daddies. And uh, for the mamas, we are constricting um, 
a bakery, artisanal, so it will be like the job, it's for them. It will be like the job for them in the village. We are also doing like a bridge. You will see like, we have like a, the plantation is so 20 hectares mm. and we have like a river. Normally people um, go through the river to go to the other side. But people, like one lady died a few days ago. So we decided to, to, to have a bridge. So are you, it would be easier for are people Are you doing that yourself? Mm? Are you constructing the bridge by yourself? Yeah, yeah, by myself. We, yeah. we always have all, all the things to have the bridge and the chief cobra will build the bridge. Yeah, he, he has the know-how to do that. $600. Mm -hmm. Can I pay for it? Oh, whoa, <laughs> you are more than welcome. Yeah? <laughs> let me pay for the bridge. But when you finish the bridge, let me know that you've done it. Okay. All right. I pay for the bridge. You know, I just want to say that you are an inspiration and I don't even know what to say right now. Um, I feel like a lot of people need to know you. <laughs> Thank you. Because you know what? Sometimes we invest in a community. We invest. We don't think about the community, but you invested and you're also thinking about the community, which I think it's fantastic. Actually, I think it's normal to, to think about the community. No, but most <laughs> people don't. You know, you have no idea. I've done a lot of interviews, you know. So many people don't think about the community. What type of coffee are you growing in here? Arabica and Robusta. Like, for example, here you have, like, baby plants of Arabica. Okay. We will put it on the ground for the rainy season. Okay. And here you have um, Robusta plants, baby plants. You see, you are a, a, a young female entrepreneur and I mean, most girlfriends don't want to be that entrepreneur. I believe that your story can inspire so many young females out there, yeah? If you have a message for them, what would that message be? Uh, I think it's important to be independent. Wow. Um, like my... Say that again. <laughs> I think it's important to be independent. <laughs> You heard that? <laughs> Enough of asking for the wigs and the nails and the... Uh-huh, continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I, I think it's important because it's your freedom too. Like, if I want to do something, I can do it. Ooh. I'm not dependent of someone's mind or someone's willingness mm. to, to help me to do something. Also, um, in this world, like in, in, uh, in Congo, for example, you have 55% of the persons in Congo are women. Oh, wow. So imagine we say to women to not make a change. It's more than half of the, like, of the people. Oh. We have to be part of the, of the change we, the, we, we want to see. We have, to be, we have a, um, a role to play. Mm. And actually, I'm not the kind of person that will say to you that man and woman are the same thing. We are different. But it's not we, like a gender is better and the other one is less. We are different but equal, and so we have to also make a change, play our part, and uh, we have to, to have the freedom that we want. It's not because you are free, independent, but you're not a good wife. It's not because you're free, independent, but you're not like a good mom. You can so, be all of that. So you're, you're talking about a financial freedom for young females. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes financial freedom but also uh, freedom of the mind why not we cannot think and um, act and create things why we just have to cook why we just have to ask for money and as I said um, we have a culture where we always ask 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 well women also have to ask ask like, 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 like a kid are you married uh, I have a fiance <laughs> fi I'll say hey Mr. Fiancé, I know you're watching this video. <laughs> you are the luckiest man on earth, man. To have a woman to tell you that, hey, you need to be financial independent. Brother, you're lucky, man. You, you just have to make it as soon as possible, man. Put that ring and make it official. Thank you. I think I'm good.